Hello everybody and welcome to this intro and demo video of Silver Bullet. Uh, Silver Bullet is a project I've been working on for the last three, three plus years or so. And effectively it grew into what I call a personal productivity platform. In essence, it's a note-taking app, right? Uh, you write notes in, in, in a format called Markdown, but because it has all kinds of like powerful features, including the use of Lua, which we'll get into, uh, you can use it for many more things than just plain old notes, as, as we will see uh, in this demonstration today. Um, if you visit the Silver Bullet website, you will actually see Silver Bullet in action because the main website is implemented as a Silver Bullet instance. It's just running in, re in re read only mode, um, but it's fully operational, right? You can click on links, you can navigate around, all the stuff uh, is kind of working. You cannot just simply cannot edit anything there. Um, but we're not going to dive too much into the website itself. We're just going to run the uh, Silver Bullet locally. So let me do that right now. In here, what I have is an empty folder on my local disk. And I'm now going to run uh, the Docker version of Silver Bullet locally. So let me do that, um, which is not how you would run this in quote unquote production, right? But it's good for testing and then demonstration. So this gives you a URL, localhost URL, and here we are. Here we have a, a locally running instance of Silver Bullet. What we're looking at is the index page of what we call a space. A space is basically a folder on disk. I'll show you in a bit how that all works um, with files in it. And all those files represent pages generally, right? So there's some nice introduction uh, here, but we're just going to de delete that for now. So at the center of this minimalistic uh, interface, you have a markdown editor. This is just like you can type text here, right? This is text. I'm saying hello. Um, this looks like plain text, but you can put in markdown codes like double asterisks around text. You can see that that will make the text bold. The moment you move your cursor outside of this, um, uh, these markup codes, they will kind of disappear and it will look a little bit like what you see is what you get, right? The WYSIWYG type editor, while in reality, like all the codes are still there, right? And if you select it or if you alt click into these uh, places, you can see what is the code actually behind it. Um, you can type all the markdown codes by hand. You can also use keyboard shortcuts. You can say like, hey, hello, I want to make it italic. So you use command I. Um, there's also slash commands for common things. You can say this should really be a header. And then you say, okay, header one, it will make it a top level header or level three will make it a third level header. Uh, this is a task. You can turn it into a task. These are all convenience functions, right? In the end, you can just type all these things by hand. It's just a little bit more convenient to, to use keyboard shortcuts and to use um, slash commands, but it's all there. So at its core, it's like a nice and convenient markdown editor. In here, you can also create links. Like if I would like to create a link to the Silver Bullet website, for instance, I just copy that. I pick the text that I want to turn into a link and I paste the link on top. And now it's a link that if you click it, it, it will visit there as you would expect. And what makes this a little bit more interesting that you can create links also inside of your space, like your whole space will not be a single note, right? A single page. Um, so you can say like another page, right? So now we created a link to another page. That link will initially appear in kind of orangey brown, which means that the page doesn't yet exist. The moment that you click it, the page will be created. So now we created the page, the URL changes, and it's like, these are some more notes, right? What you will notice is that at the bottom, you see link linked mentions. And linked mentions are basically all the incoming links. So all the other pages in your space, in this case, there's just one, that are linking to this particular page, which allow you to kind of ni nicely navigate through your space as you go, right? Um, so in here, there's a link here, and then you go back and so on. So this is one way of nav navigating your space, kind of like a wiki, right? Like a personal wiki. The other way to navigate your space is by using the page picker over here. Usually I don't click that button, I just hit Command K. Uh, and here, in here I can see all the pages that exist in my space. We started out with an index, we created another page, and there's a, an additional 
kind of magic automatically generated page config where we can do uh, some tweaking of our, our settings. We're not going to look at that uh, right now. What you can also do in the page picker is uh, enter, create new pages. So like this is a new page. If that page doesn't exist, there will be an option to create it. So now I can uh, go here, create page. And now this page also exists. There will be no linked mentions here because no other page is linking here. But the moment that I start to add a link to, for instance, here, this is a new page, this link uh, will appear in linked mentions as well, right? So this is roughly speaking how you would build up, like you can create markdown notes this way um, and create links between different pages. So a very common use case is that I say, hey, I'm just going to create, um, um, some, I have a meeting with somebody and I'm just going to create like a header and then I'm going to put the day of the day in there and then I'm going to just like note one, note two, right? This type of thing. This is how I use Silver Bullet basically every day. All right, this is all nice, simple stuff. Let's get to the more powerful things because in addition to just using regular markdown uh, with some minor extensions, there's also um, the ability to leverage Lua. So Lua is a programming language. Um, this is the website that it's been around for quite a while. It's, it's popular in specific niches like game development. Um, but what is, makes it really nice is that it's a very small language and it's very easy to learn. And it somehow really naturally fits into Silver Bullet. So this a Silver Bullet has a custom implementation of Lua called Space Lua because it's Lua used in your silver bullet space and the way you use it or one of the ways that you can use it is uh, using this notation so dollar sign curly brace and then inside there you can put lua expressions for instance 10 plus 12 right and the moment that you move your cursor out of this um, lua directive let's say it will live preview into the evaluation of that lua expression so 10 plus 2 is 12 wow we have just created a calculator. That's amazing. Um, of course, you can do more interesting with this, right? So one of the things you can do, and it kind of gives you a, like an extension mechanism on top of Markdown, is to create custom widgets. So one of the widgets that kind of ships with Silver Bullet, but it is, it is implemented in, in Space Lua, is the YouTube embed uh, widget. So if I take a YouTube video, for instance, the old version of this particular one, I can do embed.youtube, paste in the link there, and then that live previews into the inline embedding of that video, right? Um, the implementation of this is in Lua. If you command click on that, you can actually see what it looks like. YouTube widget, a couple of lines of Lua code and implementation done. We're not going to dive into how to do all of this very specifically, but just to give you a sense of what's behind all this, right? All right, so that's embedding uh, widgets. That's cool. Let's look at something um, more practical, let's say. So what I would like to do is start to track books that I'm reading. So I'm going to add a book section here. Let's say that I'm uh, reading currently the books Harry Potter and I robot. Right. Um, Harry Potter, I'm just going to take some notes on this is a nice book. And then I robot. Let me just create, show you another way of creating these pages. So as I don't know if I mentioned that, but like the moment that you create a new page, if you link to a page that does not yet exist, it will also appear in this page picker. So here at the bottom, you will now see iRobot as a kind of suggestion. It says create page because it knows that page doesn't exist, but you linked to it somewhere. So it's probably a page you will want to create soon. So you can click that or you can type a part of that and then just create the page right there, right? Which is quite convenient. Um, there's also a movie. All right, so now we created two links to books. That's all very nice. Before I continue, let me have a little bit of an interlude here to show you what's going on behind the scenes because we've been creating a bunch of pages right now, right? Like we have these 
uh, different pages here like where does that all live where does that all go so let me go back to the terminal and just kill the server here so we can have a look um, at what's happened on the file system so we started out with an empty folder right um, but basically as we were progressing it just created pages on the fly with as dot mark dot md files right so these are just text files on disk there's no magic here like it's just plain markdown files on a disk which also means that you can do a git put a git repo behind this and push these things to do versioning you can do all kinds of things you can do random transformations on this it's just folders on in a on, on disk right which is kind of nice and clean what you will notice if you look at my background is like so i just killed the server so the server is not running right now our bar now turns out to be yellow so what's going on here? Well, it lost connection with the server, right? Because the server is no longer running. In most web apps, that would mean, okay, end of story, you can have to reconnect to do anything. Not so much in Silver Bullet, because in Silver Bullet, it's, it's local first, which means that it keeps a complete copy of your entire space locally in your browser persistently, right? That also means that I can reload this page, I can close the tab, I can create it new, even if the server is not running or I have no internet connection and have full access to my nodes, everything here works. I can create new pages. I can navigate between them. Uh, the, the linked mentions are there. Uh, later we'll get to other fancy stuff. Everything still works, even though, and yeah, I can make edits here, right? And then reload them. The edits are still there, even though I'm offline. Um, again, offline first, which is extremely valuable, especially if you use this, for instance, on a mobile phone. And this works perfectly fine on, on a mobile phone. You can also install this as a PWA, which basically gives you like a dock or like Windows icon somewhere. So you can launch this thing wherever you go. It looks and feels like an application then, and you can uh, fully offline capable. The moment that I start my server again, so let me do that here. If we wait a second files will sync back see now the bar turns gray again and you see that it's writing the index.md file because that has changed while we were offline right anyway this is what i wanted to show um, with, with about the offline capability let's go back to our books use case so right now what i did here is i uh, just manually created links right what if i want to say you know what my workflow is i will just want to create if i read a new book i'll just create a new page for it but i don't want to constantly be bookkeeping here right? i don't want to constantly haha bookkeeping i don't want to constantly keep adding links here i just want to silver bullet to just know what my books are and just always keep this list up to date how can I approach that? Well, the first step is to start to ta uh, use tagging. Uh, pages can be tagged and there's different ways of tagging a page. One is to put in a, uh, a tag there at the top. Another is to use what's called front matter, uh, which is like a kind of standardized way of adding additional metadata attributes to your page. So in this case, I'm adding a book tag. Later, we can add more. Um, can, uh, actually, let me immediately add another one. For instance, author. So I can add uh, JK Rowling here. We'll see why this is useful down the line. For now, let me just do this. Uh, and then let me also go to iRobot. Add the same there. But of course, this is I, uh, I, uh, Asimov, right? It's also a book. All right. Um, now, how do I query all my books? Because effectively, this is what I want to do. And this is where Lua comes in again. We can add a Lua query here and say, hey, um, I would like to query the object index, so index, with a particular tag. And the tag that I just created was book. What this will do, like this language is not SQL, but it looks a little, a little bit SQL-like. It's, it's a custom thing developed for, for Silver Bullet in Space Lua. Um, but it allows you to do all kinds of interesting um, things here. So by default, what it will do is now query all the pages that have been tagged with book. So let's see what that live previews into. And as you can tell here, um, it turns it into a table. So now we get to see all the books that I created in my page and all the attributes that 
these pages have. So name, of course, is the name of the page. There's permissions, create a date, content type, all not very interesting. What is more interesting is this author column, right? Because that's the additional front matter that we added to each of those pages. So let me update this query a little bit to make it more clean. Uh, so it has this way of uh, defining to, to selecting just a couple of uh, properties from that book. So one is going to be the title, which is uh, basically going to be the, the page name, right? And the author, which is the author from matter attribute. And now I have a nice and neat table of all the books in my space. The moment that I create a new um, book, so I'm not going to add Harry Potter to. Uh, I'm going to also front matter this one, author JK Rowling again, and then tag it with book. Um, blah, blah. It is automatically added to this table, right? All right, that's nice, but now I have a table here that, I mean, it looks okay, but I kind of want to be able to go there, right? Like there's no linking here. So what I would actually uh, like to have is a list of all the books that are just page links, right? Like a, a bulleted list of all the books that I have in my space, maybe organized by the date that that page was last modified. So I have the, the most recently active books, let's say at least where I keeping, I'm keeping notes um, at, uh, sorted at the top. So how do we do that? Um, what we can do here is wrap this in uh, a thing called template iterator. Uh, and what we're going to do is basically for each of the books in this particular query, I would like to render a particular template. And there's a bunch of templates built in. Uh, we're just going to use the page item one for now. Um, and what this will do, I can skip this part. It will iterate, it will, uh, I, I can show you the implementation actually. Well, let's not do that, it's too, too much detail. This is what it renders as. So now uh, for every one of those books, it created a list item and those are clickable. So I can now go here and just navigate there right away, right? And that list automatically updates. I can create custom templates. So if I want to do more custom formatting, ah, this is the thing I wanted to add. This order by mass modified desk. So now I'm ordering all these books uh, by ordered by the last modified date and putting the most recently updated at the top, right? And indeed the Harry Potter page that we just created now appears at the top. And this list will automatically be updated. What else can you query? Lots of things. So now we are querying uh, tags. You can query all pages in your space. You can query uh, tasks, for instance. Um, uh, let, me not, let me just do this from scratch. So like query, I can query task. And this will give me a list of all the tasks in my space. And there's some stuff there that you may not recognize, but you will see this particular one. This is a task is also queryable and appears in the object index as a task. And it will also show you whether it's been completed or not. So if I now uh, mark it as done, and I reload this thing, you'll see that done has now been marked as true. So now we can do a where clause on this and like give you only the completed task or the, only the un uncompleted task. Like the sky's the limit, right? You can start to query all kinds of things here. Um, all right. I think this is enough to get started. I think this gives you some sense of what Silver Bullet is capable of. So where to go next? Where to go next, I would say, is the website. Uh, there are install instructions there on how to run this locally. I would install it locally first, just to give a, get a little bit of sense uh, of how it all works. Then you deploy it on a server somewhere, maybe in your local, uh, in your basement, maybe on your local machine, whatever works for you, or so, some cloud instance. Um, and start playing it with it, start using it, right? Um, then if you read all the webs the website, I definitely recommend also visiting the community site. This is a, a, disc a discourse forum, a lot of activity there, people playing with things, exchanging ideas, reporting issues, <laughs> hypothetical issues. Uh, there's chat. It's a nice group of people that are very uh, passionate about their silver bullet use. So I would definitely recommend that. All right, I think that's all and enough for this first video. Enjoy and tell us what you think. See ya.